Hey everybody, Grimer here coming at you once again from Ser Gordo Zoo playing some more Zawa for your eyeballs and ear holes to enjoy. And I hope you are all having a wonderful Friday. Now you're probably looking around me going, uh, Grimer, hello, that is not actually Ser Gordo. You are just in the ground and you'd be correct about the second part. Okay, this is actually Ser Gordo. It just said, yes, I am in the ground. Uh, I have been doing some work in between episodes as well as doing some streaming over on the Discord. So those of you who have been in the Discord and in those streams probably know. I've been doing some work actually digging quite a bit underneath the zoo. It's kind of bonkers actually how many tunnels are actually underneath here now. <laughs> okay, it's just kind of nuts. All right, this is going to be the roller coaster track that goes down here and makes you feel like you're completely turned around and that you don't know where you're going because it is an absolute maze down here. Okay, now that's okay. Right now, it's not that bad. It actually looks very clean. Of course, I'm going to be changing that here in a little bit because I have to do a lot of decorating down here. But I'm going to do that uh, a little bit in between episodes, a little bit on stream in the Discord, if any of you guys are a part of that. Patreon, by the way, in case you're wondering how to get in on that. You can tune into some of the uh, unique live streams, that the exclusive live streams that I got going on over there every once in a while, as well as some of our fun uh, events we do, like bingo and whatnot. But this, I'm not here to talk about that, okay? I'm here to talk about the zoo. And uh, we got a lot of detailing to do down here in this uh in this mine shaft okay it's kind of kind of nuts okay that it's it's gonna take a while Ugh. but <laughs> i do want to try to get this done because i am trying to quickly get to the end of the season because i'm kind of getting excited i'm kind of getting excited for for season three and hopefully you guys are too despite you not knowing at all what it's going to be about i do though and i'm excited so if that tells you anything it should be it's, it's going to be a lot of fun but in today's episode though we are going to be doing an Okapi exhibit? I think that's what they're called. I'm probably mispronouncing that big time. I'm sorry if I am. Oh, I can hear the uh, I can hear the uh, the big uh, birds above me. <laughs> Ones that sound like demonic firecrackers. But anyway, the uh, uh, I'm going to be doing the Okapi exhibit. But before we get to that, oh my god, there's so many tunnels down here. Before we get to that, I have to go name some animals because we built we built the petting zoo in last week's episode, and uh, you guys killed it in the comment section with names there. A lot of Pokemon names, like. You guys put a lot of Pokemon names there. Holy cow. But we got to get up there and we got to actually, uh, we got to get to naming these things. So let's get to that. As soon as I can figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> Aha. Freedom. I made it out. But check this out. I also did a little bit of work over here. Kind of, kind of brief detailing. Not anything too uh, spectacular at the moment. The creeper, buddy. You need to go away, bud. The, uh, the, uh, the zoo is closed. But thank you for the gunpowder. Uh, not anything too detailed yet. It's been just basically throwing in the basic blocks, getting the rough shape of this down. This is some of the stuff that I carved out in the uh, in the last live stream that we did. So I got some more detailing done here. Like I said, I've been I've been hard at work. There was one night, people. Oh, I was up till like two thirty in the morning working on this so far. Oh, this part that uh, stuck out of the mountain. Uh, I figured I'd make it look like a collapsed section because that makes a little bit more sense. You know. Like, it, it looks like the, the mine shaft kind of caved in and collapsed that way. I don't know. Uh, I kind of like it. Still up in the air on it, but I, I, it kind of works. But anyway, we got to get to the hidey hole, which... Oh, boy, I'm going to I'm gonna land in a leopard pit, but let's give it a whirl anyway. Something like that. I'm going to... Uh, that's the leopard pit for sure. Leopard pit. Oh, I'm good. All right. <laughs> All right, let's get in here and uh, and start naming some of these animals. Now, would you believe it, but we actually have seven animals to name here. There's four rabbits, as well as one pig, one sheep, and one llama as well. So let's start this thing off. We're going to name the first rabbit Peter. After Peter Cottontail, I assume. But that's uh, that was submitted by Star Nanny, so thank you for that. And then diving on into the uh, Pokemon names. By the way, these are all for the rabbits, in case you guys are wondering. So Peter Cottontail, obviously, is a rabbit. You get it. You know, but All right, diving into the Pokemon names. All right, we're going to go with Lopunny. Okay, that was submitted, actually, by Sakana. I think that that's actually a really good name. After all, Lopunny is a, a bunny Pokemon. And keeping with, <laughs> with the Pokemon suggestions, because there were a lot of them, we're going to go with Bunnelby. Okay, now Bunnelby was actually the most requested name out of any animal. So we had SlothBuddy206, Sakana, Jorn Connings, and Poke Lewis all suggest Bunnelby. And big shout out to Chelsea McClendon out there, if you are watching. We are going to name the final rabbit Bob. <laughs> All right, we are on to the pig next. The pig's name is going to be uh, John Pork, okay? <laughs> that was submitted by Gigategu, so thank you for that. And for the sheep name, keeping with the Pokemon themes, uh, we are going to call this one Mareep. And that was submitted by Lars uh, Damon. 
Diamond? Damon? I might be mispronouncing that last name. If I am, I apologize. But thank you for the name, though. Thank you for the Marie name. That's going to be a perfect sheep. And then finally, big shout out to Matt Myers out there for suggesting the name uh, Kuzco for the llama. All right, now Kuzco is the llama that's voiced by David Spade in The Emperor's New Groove. So, yeah, that's an easy one. <laughs> I barely have room in my inventory to hold all this stuff. <laughs> that's a lot of animals. Uh, all right, let's get in here. At least I don't need the Zawa book because these are actually, after all, all vanilla mobs. So... The Zawa book doesn't really do much for them, I guess. So this is going to be the llama right here, and then we got the sheep right there, and then we got the bunnies right here, and then we got the pig right there. So let's go ahead and start with the llama, maybe, and we'll get in here. Let's see, where is the llama? Right there, okay. And we need to find Kuzco right there. Got it. All right, let's go ahead and slap this bad boy down. Wham. There you go. There, enjoy your name. <laughs> Welcome to Saragordo. Kuzco, you will be here forever and ever now. Nice butt. All right, on to the sheep. Where is the sheep? Sheep, sheep, sheep. There it is, right there. Got it. All right, and the sheep is going to be Mareep. Let's go ahead and slap that bad boy down there. Mareep, enjoy your save. All right, the pig. Where is the pig? Give me the pig. There it is, the pig right there. And this is going to be John Pork. Wink, there you go. Net broke, too. Look at that. Bam, welcome, John Pork, to Sarah Gordo. <laughs> Oh boy, the bunnies. Okay, now I I, I want to say that one of these things is a baby when I got it, but I don't really remember. But we got we got some rabbits we got to name, so let's just kind of do two at a time, I guess, for right now. So this first one here is gonna be Peter. Yep. Oh, and that's the that's the bunny, or that's the uh, the baby one. We're gonna name him Peter. Now that's okay. Don't worry. I got some grow juice here that he might like. Go ahead and chow down on all these carrots. Yes, eat this stuff. This in your face. Grow big. Grow big and strong. Eat the food. All right, I've had him almost an entire stack. I unfortunately, though, do need to wait for him to grow up. There it is. Bam! Just like that. You stuff an entire stack of carrots in his face and they grow up. Here, you can eat the last one, too. Kind of made him horny, but whatever. Oh! He just jumped right over the fence. Well, then. That changes things, doesn't it? I experimented in everything, and it just didn't... He just yeeted himself right over that thing. That is insane. All right, well, slight little modification to the rabbits, then. Okay, so the rabbits get two high fences just to keep them in here. I don't know what else to do. It doesn't look as good as what I had it before, but it should keep them contained. Okay, there you go, Peter. Now you can jump free all you want. Or at least free as in contained in this area. <laughs> free. <laughs> all right, the next one's going to be Bunnelby. There you go. Bunnelby got him before he jumped away. <laughs> And then the one after that is going to be Low Punny. Let's quick name that one. Boy, there we go. Okay, that looks like the uh, evil bunny of uh, Carnarog or whatever that was in Monty Python, the monster. But whatever. At least the killer bunny actually isn't in the game anymore. <laughs> and then the final one's going to be Bob. Let's see if I can do this quick. Got Bob. There we go. Named. So the bunnies have been added. And, uh, oh, man, that one was getting pretty close. Might have to make this three high. E. All right, let's uh, quickly see if I can hop out here. So that they don't get out, and I think I think we're good. I think bunnies are good. Might might do do it three high actually. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna sleep because creepers be creeping. I don't really want to get blown up. Actually, here, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a little something like that. There we go. Looks a little awkward, but that should keep them in there. And I sealed that up completely. Yeah, I don't think they're jumping over that. So the bunnies should be good in there the way they are. It, it kind of looks like a prison cell. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, but all right, that they should they, they should be fine in there. Let's get on to the rest of the episode. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put some of this back here. I got a whole bunch of uh, nets that I got to put someplace. I'll find a home from somewhere. But the Okapi exhibit, I'm thinking about putting right here. Now I only have one of them, and there's not a lot of room right here actually, too. So. This could be interesting. I'm also tempted to not recess it in the ground. It's an idea. Maybe, maybe. Oh, actually, you know what? I'll do. I'll do. I'll do the same thing that we did for the vampire deer back here, <laughs> for the uh, for the tough deer. We'll 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 do a similar thing like this. Where we'll put a fence in the area, but then the front part will be recessed so that people have a really good viewing distance of like these things. They can see them. They can see their butts bouncing up and down. They uh, they, no problem seeing them. They don't have like a fence in the way. Because if we did a if we did a fence, you have to look at them through this. And although it's not like the end of the world or anything like that, I mean, you can still see them. It's, it's just not as good, I don't think. So what we'll do is we'll actually do a recessed ground in the front and then fence it in in the back. The back will be the part that uh, is facing the rest of the zoo. Yeah, like that, back there. So we'll put a little one right here. It's not gonna be a very big exhibit, to be fair. I mean, it's actually kind of, kind of a 
It fit. Oh, I got room in front here. I'm sitting here like, where, where am I gonna fit this thing? So the torch line is where the path is gonna go, right? So, uh, blah, blah, blah. Get some torches out here. I don't have many of them in my inventory, but this is this is where the path is gonna go. Let's knock that over one a little bit. Straight up that way. Uh, so I got a little bit of wiggle room here where I can put the exhibit right in here. Not a very big exhibit, but it is only one animal that we're gonna be putting in here, and it's not like a huge thing. Now, Okapis, I don't know a thing about. So, to the internet. Well, that was not what I was expecting. Okay, so, <laughs> they are a type of giraffe. I mean, well, they're related to the giraffe. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean, they'll be able to see the giraffes from here. Uh, like that guy right there. So they are a type of giraffe that lives in dense rainforest kind of areas. Interesting in Central Africa. See, this is why I love playing Zawa because I learned so many cool things like that. Like I didn't even know these things existed. Uh, okay, so I have to go get some uh, some a little bit of blocks uh, prepared because I like a true professional. I'm not. I got a lot of them on me, but I need to go get a couple extra. And I also need to stash uh, all of these nets someplace. So I gotta get my inventory sorted, and then we're gonna start on construction. I don't really have to do much digging, because like I said, it's gotta be only recessed in the front, so this shouldn't be too much work to prep this area. I just gotta get my inventory sorted. Okay, so we're talking rainforest, Congo area, so it actually wouldn't, well, it's, it's, this isn't like actually like a, they, they, they don't live in jungles. It, like, they live in more of a canopy, almost like a, uh, it, from judging from the pictures and the location of the wor world where I described it as, it's almost like a savanna, but not dry. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking about, uh, I might need to go grab some more terracotta in that case, because I kind of want to sprinkle a little bit of that in there. Although, I don't know, let's, that might be enough. How much do I have in the bat backpack? Do I have any in the bat backpack? No. I need to go grab at least a stack of terracotta real fast, because I think I'm going to use that in this build for sure. Okay, terracotta acquired. Now, these things are crazy looking. Now, they look kind of like a... Zebra mixed with a horse mixed with a giraffe face. Very strange animals, not gonna lie. This is something I'm not used to seeing, especially in my neck of the woods. That's because I don't live in this area that these things come from. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's carve out the kind of the front entrance here. I wanna kind of carve it back. This isn't gonna be a very big exhibit. Let's see, I could, uh, I could always kind of build up this cliff edge a little bit better here. Uh, so I can always push it probably to about right here, I'm thinking. Uh, this is where the front of the exhibit's gonna be. So, I don't really need to go much farther than that, I'm thinking. And let's dig this back a, a hair here, and then we're going to carve it right back that way. Uh, let's see, this actually looks pretty good. I don't really want to mess with that. Hold on, I might I might change my mind here a little bit and have this, fill this back in. And bring it to right here instead. Kind of winging it here, trying to get this shape down correctly. What if we did something like that? There we go. Like I said, it's a smaller exhibit, and it, it, it can be relatively deep to about where the cliff edge here is. So it'll be a small area for this thing. You know what? I can actually bring it over another block or so and give it just a little bit more breathing room. I, I don't want to make it feel like this animal is cramped in here, you know? Something like that. Now, I know I'm sure on the map that probably looks like a smiley face or a sideways smiley face, but something like that is where the front of the exhibit's going to be, and then it's going to raise up and back, obviously, and then have uh, you know a fence in here to keep the keep the Okapi from escaping. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of magic work here and shape this ground here to make this actually work. Uh, just give me a second real fast. Ta-da! All right, now I realize that doesn't, like, look amazing. <laughs> That looks pretty boring, but this is just the rough cutout, and I put some of the supports in also for where I want the fence to actually be. Now, the reason why there's a few of them in back is because I'm going to have to kind of diagonal this fence a little bit. And let me give you guys a cool example of something. Uh, when you look at the fences in here, you know, when you when you place them, they look great in a line. But when you start going, like, diagonal with some of these things, like, that, that's what a fence looks maybe. Hold on, that's what a fence looks like in a line. When you start going diagonal with these things, they start looking... A little messed up, okay. Like, I, at least I think so. I don't really like how they look when they start going di when they start ooh, <laughs> when they start going diagonal. <laughs> Let me fix that real quick. Fixing my example here. 
Yeah, when you start going diagonal, I don't really like how they look at all. Yeah, God, I'm just clicking like crazy today. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really like how that looks. Like, from an angle, I guess it's not that bad, but from straight on, it looks kind of weird. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I just don't like how they look when they're at an angle. The chain link fence, anyway, because it doesn't really make sense for the chain link fence to have all these, like, 90 degree turns in it. And I guess in Minecraft it does, but in my brain it doesn't, so I try to avoid it. So to do that, or to fix that, I actually put down, like, sections in here that kind of allow me to uh, just kind of make the diagonal, like, shape without having to add the fence in diagonally, if that makes any sense. So, so I can fill this in like a so. And then I have to raise it up, and then I can go like, uh, ooh, actually, this one is uh, not in the right spot, is it? That is in actually, you know what? We'll make it work. Check this out. We'll just go right here. Winging it. That's what I'm talking about. And then we'll go right there. So that's uh, that's how we'll get this... Uh, oh, man, I'm misclicking. Misclicking. That's how we'll get this fence in here. Keep it at a diagonal without it actually looking like it's at a diagonal. Yeah, there we go. That works. Actually, you know what? I, like, I think it'll work better if... We actually put this one that I placed in the wrong spot completely because I'm a true professional back here. It'll give the uh, the Okapi a little extra space to move around. Yeah, I think that'll look better if we put it back there. So that, that way in the front, I need to eat some chicken. I need to throw out these worms and I need to eat some chicken because I cannot run because I'm a hungry person. There we go. Um, yeah, it'll give them a little bit more wiggle, wiggle room there. I like that a lot better. Hopefully that looks good from the front. Oh, yeah. No, that looks fine. Okay, yeah. I think that'll work. That'll work good. Okay, the fence has been handled. Hey, let's inhale some chicken and ponder for a second. I need to build, obviously, a much better terrain than what's in here. So I'm going to quickly slap in the rest of this fence, and then uh, and then we'll get going on the actual landscape. Obviously, I'm going to replace the uh, stone and dirt here with uh, grass to start off, because where these things are located, there is grass. There's a... Uh, it's actually, it, it's it's technically it's a type of rainforest. It's actually quite very lively there. However, uh, it does look like I said in the, earlier in the episode. It kind of looks like a savanna, but not dry. So I'm going to try to design it kind of like that. A lot of tall grass, and then in the back, I want to actually have some probably acacia trees. Is what I'm going to put in there. I know that's I don't think that's exactly what is there, but that's what I'm going to put in there to kind of represent their environment. Okay, the grass will spread down through there I'm sure just fine I'll probably change the blocks up before we get there beforehand because down here I actually want to put water I don't think this thing's going to drown in water and it looks like a lot of the areas that these things live is uh is like near river so I want to make sure that I put water in their exhibits just so they feel nice and at home up here I'm thinking about throwing maybe just one tree I know that they like to live under like a canopied forest but this isn't a lot of space so we're gonna probably just throw one tree and then have this represent more of like a little plains area kind of for them to get some sun if they would like um but we need to change up this block palette big time i guess starting with in the river we'll do the river first now if you guys have seen any of my episodes before you know that the rivers have generally uh was it like coarse dirt at the bottom of them and all that other fun jazz however this one is supposed to represent like a river and rivers usually have like a fine silt and stuff at the bottom of them and so as well as mud and whatnot. So let's go ahead and pop into the bat backpack and we're gonna grab ourselves some of this coarse dirt Yeah, that's gonna be important But we're also going to grab in the ground backpack some sand because I think that'll work in the in the ground here Or in the river as well. Maybe a little bit of gravel All right So let's go ahead and get these things on the hot bar and we're going to just sprinkle all these things in here Periodically and we're gonna make ourselves a nice little riverbed with a lot of sand in it There we go. I actually don't like it <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. It needs one thing. One last thing, but I need to go back to the little hidey hole to grab it. Hi, everyone. Editor Grimer here. Thought I'd just share this nice little clip with you because while I was heading back to the hidey hole, my second son, Jacob, walked in and startled me. Holy cow. Hi, bud. Scared me. What a guy. Uh-huh. This block right here. So I think it's safe to say that if this was a river nearby, like a uh, kind of like a uh, rainforest area, that having clay in the river would probably make a lot of sense. So we're going to go ahead and dot this in here too. I don't think I've used clay in any exhibit so far. <laughs> so kind of changing it up a little bit. Okay, riverbed complete. Now onto the rest of the land here. I'm thinking we're going to definitely want some coarse dirt mixed in here. Let's look in the bat backpack real quick. Grab that terracotta that I collected earlier in the episode. Probably a little bit of this too for down near the, the water's edge. And then, uh, what else can we put in here that would make it look... I mean, sand, yeah, would look pretty good. I 
I don't really want to put red sand because that kind of makes it look more like an outback. So maybe sand and we'll put some of the sandy coarse dirt mixed in too a little light, lightly, not, not that much. And let's start with that and see what we get. We're going to start with uh, the riverbed here. Let's work on the side of the river here and we're going to tack in a little bit of mud. Obviously, remember, I use brown terracotta as mud instead of uh, actual mud blocks because I don't like the animals getting stuck in the mud blocks. But we're going to just do this lightly in here, too. I don't really want to go too heavy on the mud in this area. So just like maybe like that. That might be it. That's all I really want to do on the edge of the water itself. Uh, let's put that away because I don't really want to see it ever again for this exhibit. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and sprinkle in the, uh, the coarse dirt next. All right, I didn't go too heavy on the uh, coarse dirt actually here because I don't want to make this place look like it's dry and arid and disgusting. I do want to sprinkle in ever so slightly a couple blocks here and there, maybe right next to the other coarse dirt of this dry, uh, this, this sandy dirt. But mainly I want to do that near the beach more so than I want it, it like uh, up farther along because I want it to look like the sand here kind of makes sense. I also do want to go ahead and actually sprinkle in actual sand along the beach too. So, like, even just a couple of blocks of the sandy coarse dirt might be all I actually put in here. And I want to find at least one more spot for it. Though maybe actually right on, right here where it's kind of like hitting the water like that. Yeah, something, nothing, well, I might squeeze one more in there somewhere. But I, I want to sprinkle in a little bit of uh, sand here on the beach as well. Like so. That way, obviously, while it's bleeding into the water, it makes a little bit of sense. And maybe even one, like, up here, just kind of in that area. Yeah, that, mm, 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 that kind of looks pretty good like that. I'm thinking that looks good for the beach area. Yeah, I don't really want to sprinkle too much sand too far up, you know, away from the beach because it doesn't make as much sense. All right, let's get out this terracotta and maybe add that in next. It's primarily going to be heavier up here, and it's not going to be as prevalent down near the water edge. Voila. All right, we got the terracotta added, and now I think just adding in a couple little spots of gravel is all that this place needs, and it's basically done then after that. With the land basically complete, let's head on down here. We'll actually get the water going now. We'll get a couple of water buckets put in here, fill this place up. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, what makes all exhibits pop? Path blocks make all, <laughs> all exhibits pop. So let's go ahead and actually mat down some of this grass up here, because otherwise it looks like there's just way too much grass. <laughs> All right, I think the ground is about as good as it's going to get now. Um, once we get around to adding foliage to it, it'll start looking a lot better. But we got to discuss a tree real fast here. Not in that backpack. Plant backpack? Is it? Do I have? I don't know. I think I want to put an acacia tree in here. I think I mentioned that earlier in the episode. But uh, I need to get one first. Now I should have an acacia sapling. I think just good old fashioned vanilla is what I'm actually going to go for here. I should have a, an acacia sapling back in my hidey hole. Yes, I do. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to grow. I'll grab a couple just in case I don't get... Yeah, no, I'll grab one, and hopefully I get the right thing that I want. <laughs> I get the right shape tree, everything that I want. If not, I'll cut it down, and hopefully I get a sapling from it. You know, I'll recycle this sapling if I don't get the one I want. Okay, so back here we have the most amount of room for this to grow. I'm kind of hoping it grows forward a little bit, but I don't really have any control over that. Let's slap it down. Let's break this real quick because I don't need a path block for this. Put that down right there, and grow! Well, you know what? It's not that bad. It's not exactly the one I was thinking of, but it's really not that bad. I mean, it definitely works for creating a canopy for this thing to kind of chill under. I know it's a vanilla tree, which is kind of meh, but it's it's really not that bad. And I don't think I could... Well, you know what? I might be able to fit another one in there. They do like a canopy. Hold on, I gotta go grab another sapling. Why didn't I not grab a second one? Because da-da-da's got a da-da-da sometimes. That's why I didn't grab one. <laughs> Face plant. Okay, second sapling acquired. Let's slap that bad boy down right there. Grow it and see what happens. That's actually pretty good. That was that was pretty good. I was worried about it not looking that great, but it says that they like to reside under canopies. So I wanted to make sure that they have like kind of like a, a roof of leaves up there that they can actually kind of hide underneath. Uh, and they'll have access to the water, obviously, so they can always poke out and get some of that. But yeah, see, that definitely creates a canopy for them to hide under. Oh, okay, that looks good. Looks good. That actually worked out better than I thought it was going to. High five for luck. And with that, I think that we are on to doing the foliage now. So, let's look in here. What would be in this area? We're definitely going to get some of this dune grass and probably some of these sea oats too. Uh, mainly a lot of tall grass is what we need. Maybe a little couple desert sprouts because I like how they, they look. They actually look like lively. We're looking for more lively things here. 
uh, not so much dead stuff. Some clovers, I can, I, eh, I wouldn't mind grabbing more of those things. I don't have a whole lot of grass spots to put those things down here anyway, but we'll grab them anyway. Um, I know where I can get more though, should I need ostrich fern? We'll try to slap that in there too, sure, why not? Um, berry bushes, I don't know about those. All right, well the sea oats can at least go kind of near the river edge a little bit, I'm thinking. Maybe like that's probably good right there. And then the dune grass, kind of the same thing in a sense, like it'll grow near the uh, near the water's edge, more so than anything. Mm, I like plant it on gravel too. So we'll get a couple bits of this going here near the water edge right here. Oop, I tried to jump out of here, totally failed. Pro Minecraft player. Uh, that's not true actually, by the way, I'm not a pro. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell the sarcasm in my voice. But, all right, so that looks pretty good for the foliage up there. Now, let's work our way back, and this is where the desert sprouts and the ostrich ferns are going to come in a little bit more handy. So, we're going to try to blend this in so that the desert sprouts, I think, might be the, the thing that welcome things into the, the canopy area. <clears throat> and for here, we can actually drop a couple ostrich ferns and stuff up in this a little bit more greener, livelier area. Uh, how does that look? This isn't a very big exhibit, so I'm not going to have to spend too much time decorating the whole shebang but let's see let's throw those things back the clover patches i'm going to need these all can go back then in the meantime uh we're definitely going to want the dead leaves here because those are going to come in real handy in a second i would throw barley but this isn't supposed to be so much like a plains as it is oh cattails are bringing those things down as it is uh, more of like a like i said a lively area so we're keeping all the dead things out i could actually squeeze in like a toadstool or two down near the base of the trees that would actually make sense probably a dead fern occasionally as well it's not a very big exhibit, and yet I'm packing it full of this, <laughs> full of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just realized this. I don't really like how that looks. Let's just do a little one of these numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch, put that there, and then uh, ground blocks real quick. I need one more block here. We're going to switch those two, uh, two blocks completely. Perfect. You could see the, the trunk. It wasn't like going in all, all the way, and I didn't really feel like replacing it with a piece of acacia wood. <laughs> Plus, it gives us an excellent opportunity to put down a toadstool. Look at that. So this this will actually signify that this is a little bit more, or a little less dry and more of a, a damp, rainforesty kind of area is what we're going for, obviously. Now, I have, like, river cane, don't I? Yeah, river cane I think might work out real good in here, along with maybe some cattail. Let's see if we can't squeeze this in someplace. Maybe even right here in the front. Again, the path block here foils me. Uh... Let's just grab ourselves another grass block then. There we go. Bam. Get some river cane growing right in front here. Now, I think, yeah, this stuff wants to grow. Oh, I can actually plant it. See, I don't want it to block the view of everything behind it, though. So if this does grow, that could be a problem. So let's grab some string. Can I just... Yep. And then... Yep. All right. So that should prevent it from growing any farther up. Yeah, that looks fine just the way it is. But what doesn't look fine is that the sun is setting and that the zebras over there actually... Those do look pretty cool. Play the Lion King song right now. Holy cow. But uh, creepers be creeping. So I, I got to take a quick power nap real fast. Okay. Slap down a cattail kind of in the corner there. I think just one will be fine. Can these go on clay? No, they can't. I didn't think they could. Okay, I think that's good for the decorations near the water's edge. We're going to need these. I didn't get the clovers put in here yet. Let's see if we can't squeeze those in somewhere up top here. Something like that little patch right in the middle there. Like, I don't really know if clovers are really a thing that's going to be appearing in that region of the world, but it's a little added decoration, and it looks more lively up there because of it, so we'll, ru we'll run with it, you know? Squeeze in a dead bush or two someplace, kind of especially maybe near the water's edge. Let's just to say it kind of like too much water, perhaps, you know? It got too much water. Yeah, see, that looks pretty good. So it's almost like it got two biomes. It's got like a beach front or river front, and then it's got the canopy area underneath, which I think is rather interesting. <clears throat> but what else can we fit in there? Sprouts pot probably can throw a couple of them in there too. Didn't add much detail by adding them in there, but sprouts have been added. Um, I don't know if I have any other plants that I would really like to add in this exhibit. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's about it. So it's just down to tall grass now. Oh, actually, hold on. I, I lied to you guys. I lied right to your faces. Uh, what do we got for flowers? It's a rainforest, hey? Temple bells? Maybe? Peach flower? Maybe? Let's throw those in there and see what that looks like. Not bad. A little added color to, it, to the, the exhibit. Is there anything else that would just scream 
like a rainforesty kind of thing. Wildflowers might not be bad, adding a few of them in there as well, especially back by the clovers. But maybe it's like they're just getting a little extra sun back here, you know, just this little opening right here, right where the sun actually is coming in right now. That's what, <laughs> that's what they're doing. Let's add in a couple of uh, little sunflowers back, or uh, wildflowers back here, just to kind of give it a little boost in color. Let's see, what does that look like? Not too shabby. Okay, I think that's probably enough there. Let's uh, actually, yeah, let's, let's add some leaves now. Just to kind of make this look like uh, some of the leaves have dropped onto the ground below the tree. Okay, and then uh, I think from here on out, we are looking at just doing... Um, I think we're just doing uh, bone meal now just to raise this up. Although we do have to add one very important ingredient to this. And that would be not in that backpack. <laughs> Aha! There they are. But <laughs> buttons, alright. Let's go ahead and add a, a couple little pebbles in this exhibit as well. Obviously, buttons make it pop because uh, it looks like little stones on the ground. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put those back. Bust out the bone meal here real fast and, uh, and get to bone meal on this up a little bit. There we go. So, I kind of was going for a rainforest, but it, and it does look like a weird mix of a savanna mixed with like a little bit more lush area. You know, because there's like foliage and plants and stuff, but it definitely looks a little strange doesn't quite get what I was going for, though. Beard scratch. Oh, I got an idea. Green concrete powder. Added that in just a little bit. That actually does kind of work, but I did have to kind of destroy some of the, uh, the plants to get them in place. Like, especially the, uh, the dead leaf piles. I think we're on some of these pieces like that. Yeah, I'm thinking that that might work out a little bit better. Makes it look a little bit more livelier than just what we had before. Yeah, no, yeah, that looks all right. What do you think? An Okapi exhibit? I do want to change up one thing though. The, the stone right here on the side, I want to switch that to actually have wood supports on it. I think I did that for the uh, for the, the vampire deers back here too. Yeah, I did, right there. Okay, yeah, let me quick switch that out. There we go. All right, I'm thinking that there's only one thing left to do and that is just to slap a rail down on the front of this thing and call it a day. I don't really want to put any uh, any lily pads or anything in there, although I could actually, hold on, wait, not call it a day and I'm, I'm totally not done. Um, I, don't, I don't want to put any lily pads in there. I will, I'll, put, I'll put some reeds in the water though, just to kind of give it a little bit of extra life. Uh, but not, not much though, like any one more right there. Let's see how that looks. Hop out of here, squeeze over this way. Yeah, you probably won't even really be able to notice them. I don't want to put lily pads, though, because I, it's supposed to be a river, so it's supposed to be, like, more flowing water. I don't really see any lily pads usually being in there. But I'm thinking that's it, the Okapi exhibit. What do you guys think? Does that look pretty good? Good, bad, in between? All all variations of mediocre? <laughs> what do you guys think? I kind of like it. Um, I sort of want to almost raise the fence up a little bit. Oh. Either raise the fence up and back or lower those supports just a little bit. I'm not too sure. Or I could just leave them. I guess I could just leave them. I don't know. I'll tweak that later if I if I think it needs to be done. This whole terraforming needs to happen here. The terraforming here on the uh, on the dead space here needs to happen. Raising it up, making it look a lot more like that area down there. As well as um, fixing up this cliff edge here. Because I kind of just quickly built it up like that. That looks bad. That looks really bad. A lot of little things to do around the zoo here. Expect an upcoming live stream to knock out all those little details. Still coming up. But now, you guys are probably wondering, uh, Okapis, how many do I got? I think I might have mentioned, I think I only found one. I'm pretty sure I only have one of them. So if you guys could go down into the comment section and give me your best Okapi names, that'd be greatly appreciated. Because uh, these things are pretty rare. They're pretty, they're kind of uh, uncommon. They're only found in one very specific spot in the world. So, hopefully I built this exhibit right. Let me know in the comments if I got it horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm going to wrap this episode up here. So thank you guys so much for donating your eyeballs and ear holes to this episode of Zawa. We're running out of them, people. This zoo is coming to an end very soon. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the season so far. Um, and I, I will catch you guys in next week's episode. I got to get to sleep because creepers be creeping and stuff. So um, yeah, have yourself a wonderful Friday. Uh, you know, remember Mother's Day is coming up for all you uh, all you people out there. Just friendly reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys, I'm getting out of here. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.